the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode. This one is number 63 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X 3D, and for our newcomers here, this is a reminder, this is a stereographic 3D channel, which is why you see two images. It's so easy to learn X3D, it's down below in the description, it'll take you maybe two minutes. Most people get it real quick, even the kids get it, no problem. And it does open a magic window right onto the surface of Mars, and those of you who have been with me a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have some uh, wonderful finds by some of our team members this week, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy them. It's a little bit different. This last video was uh, just before this one was pretty complicated. It was a it was an advanced level 3D viewing uh, uh, video, but this one is a lot of eye candy. It's going to be easy. So let's dive right into it. I love it when you guys send me things to check out. I can't always use them for, you know, one reason or another, but one of our team members, Phil Cox, is batting a thousand so far. He's found what might possibly be writing on a rock from Sol 435. And you remember my thing about water moccasins? You find one, there's always another one nearby. In this case, I found two more items of interest that I'll share with you in just a minute. As we get a little closer, you get a better view of the three items that are targeted. Now, Phil's is up there on the upper left, and we'll start with that. But before we do, how about that nice, fat S carved on the boulder down on the left? Just wind and sand, folks. Just wind and sand. This looks pretty compelling to my eyes. Sure, a case could be made for this being some special kind of erosion that apparently only happens on Mars, but how is it that those markings are all the same height from the background? And I know this is, I don't know, subjective on my part, but these markings look purposeful to me, not like just some random weathering process. This is a great find, Phil, and this brings to mind something I found a couple years back that I called the Rosetta Stone. When I look at this, I find it really tough to call this the result of random weathering, even if it is on an alien planet. Let's move on to the second item that turned up. Okay, if you've been with me a while, you'll already be Doing a quick visual inventory of this strange white boulder. That squared off end is pretty obvious, isn't it? And all those regular little pits and lines on its surface. And to say nothing, of course, of this weirdo up in the right hand corner. I'm not even going to comment on it. Let's get in tight on the white rock. Did you notice that each series of pits is in a line? And the pits seem to be pretty much evenly spaced. Over there on the left looks like the kind of suture you'd find on a football. And of course those 90 degree angles on the right. Just what exactly was this thing back in the day? If you're one of those clever people who answer, it's a rock, do us both a favor and turn off this channel. I'm pretty sure you can find Power Ranger reruns on YouTube. I know you'll be happier there. Then this little item popped up. Doesn't look like much, right? Unless, of course, you're familiar with Sumerian cuneiform tablets. Now, to my eyes, this bears a striking resemblance, even if it's a freak of nature. And notice, that the block itself is roughly cubical in shape. If it were made of fired clay, like the cuneiform tablets we found, those edges and corners would be the first thing to wear, rubbing up against rock and sand. This also brings to mind another one I found years ago where 
The carvings appear to be actually pressed in as opposed to being carved clean and sharp. Of course, these are much larger blocks of stone, but the carvings have that same kind of pressed in look that cuneiform has. Next, we turn to a gorgeous gigapan by my buddy, Neil Spence. See the tiny, tiny target area in the lower left? I wanted to give you an idea of the huge expanse covered by this image, which in turn gives you an indication of the size of this find, first pointed out by Sean Kovic. This one got my blood flowing because to my eyes, this strange duo consists of a machine remnant and a structural artifact. Let's move in on what I'm calling a machine remnant. Man, oh man, a conical kind of, I don't know, nose cone on the left. And if you look at the base of the cone, there's a collar with serrated edges, almost like a, a gear at its base. Then you've got those flat parallel sides. And of course, that big old knob sticking straight out from the side of this thing. This brought to mind something my friend Jim West came across just recently. This reminded me of a drill press, but the important thing is that knob sticking out of the side like the one before. Are they machines or machine remnants? I'm, I'm still maintaining at least one of the civilizations destroyed in the Martian cataclysm was kind of an advanced steampunk culture based upon the various artifacts we found. Anyway, let's go back to the other member of the strange duo. So, what is this? Is it carved stone, uh, embossed metal, and an artistic representation of a not very aerodynamic rocket? This also brought to mind a find by Martin Graney. Take a look. See what I mean? Kind of the same general idea. And speaking of Martine Craney, <laughs> and isn't everybody? She first pointed this one out in Neville Thompson's Giga Macro of 2797. I found another example nearby, which we'll look at in a minute. Take a look at this in X3D, of course and let me know in the comments what you think this might be. Between pareidolia and free association, the first thing I thought of was a V-twin motor on the Harley Fat Boy I used to ride. Of course, that's ridiculous, and the fact is, this may just be a ventifact, something that looks like an artifact due to the action of wind erosion. But you know, we've found so many legitimate artifacts encased in mud fossils that this could well be a machine of some type that saw better days before being thoroughly rolled in a muddy tsunami, then sitting as a fossilized chunk of mud that gradually eroded over the millennia. This example is near the center of the context view and shows many of the same characteristics as the first one. These are highly complex erosion patterns, if that's what they are, with plenty of right angles, curves, and knobby parts, I urge you to click the link in the description and go look for yourself. There are many more similar examples in this Giga Macro. So maybe it's just a function of the local geology getting chewed up by the prevailing wind on Mars. Or maybe it's a bona fide debris field that needs closer study. Let's wrap things up with something that everybody and their pet weasel can easily see. Over there on the right, a symmetrical five-sided block, kind of like a, I don't know, a coffin? Right angles, even sides, and symmetry everywhere. And how about that one just to the left? I love that smooth sine wave curve on top with the, that trough carefully carved out between the front and back. And if that wasn't enough, it's got a perfectly straight bevel along the right side from top to bottom. But as I say, wait, there's more. Between the blocks in the background, 
is another one with a perfectly square end. And look on the side. A perfect three-sided square deeply carved into the top surface. And of course that thing sticking up on the left of the image. It could be just a sheet of rock that came to rest at an odd angle, but with all the other obviously worked blocks around it, you do have to wonder. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. And, uh, you know, could I share a little dream with you? One of these days, when I have enough subscribers and a Patreon account becomes something that might possibly work, I'd like to raise enough money to get the very expensive equipment to take the show on the road and bring this to you in person. I have at least two or three hour uh, presentations of uh, different artifacts that will just blow you away. And I'd love to take it out to the communities, to the museums, to the conferences, and actually do this in person. Kind of a kind of like when you go to IMAX 3D. You sit in the audience and you look at all of it and knock your eyes out. Eh, maybe someday. In the meanwhile, this is your buddy Dave. Thanks for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button and the bell. And I'll see you next time. And remember, be well.